I just felt I couldn't live with myself really unless I did everything I could to try and change the direction that we were going in. But the trouble is, I think a lot of people feel like that, but what can they do? And so I thought, yep, I'm not a documentary f filmmaker, but I have to do something. I have to try something. So Rachel's Farm is a feature documentary and it charts my journey from conventional farmer to regenerative farmer. The whole goal is to ecologically improve and we need to use the animals as a tool to manage our pasture and to combat climate change. Use cattle to fight climate change. Whoa, that's, that's really coming out of left field. I wanted to make the documentary because after the fires hit my farm in 2019, I sort of was plunged into an existential crisis. And also because my grandchild had just been born, my first grandchild. And I just felt so impotent to do anything about what I saw as very urgent work to be done to counter climate change. And I went, I can, I have at my fingertips, I am a filmmaker, I am a farmer, and I'm a consumer. There are actually three things I can do, I can get active with, that can help move the dial just a little tiny fraction in the right direction, I hoped. We tried some natural remedies. We put some worm juice on, to see if that made any difference. And I was very encouraged by the idea of making my own compost. You know, for me, it was a huge learning curve because I was learning as the documentary was being filmed. And I was also taking, I actually took a lot of the footage because I was keeping a, a video diary. So a lot of the footage in the film is actually used with my iPhone, which is, um, which is 4K. So it was just incredible that I could use so much of the footage that I took on the farm. More? A little bit more. Whoa, a little bit less. <laughs> I mean, a documentary is bloody terrifying. I like to go in things with a firm script already done. So it was great for me to have to be able to, as a filmmaker, be able to just loosen up and just go with whatever happened. And it really demanded of my storytelling skills and obviously of the editor's story, of Karen's storytelling skills, to be able to unweave this, you know, very subjective thing, story for me, obviously, but to actually be able to put it in story terms, a beginning, a middle and end, was, was very challenging. So I wanted my son to do the graphics in the film because I loved his sense of whimsy and humour. And I didn't want this to be a film that was, uh, it's not an educated film. The delight of this film is seeing this idiotic 60 plus woman get her teeth around being a farmer after, you know, being a filmmaker and an actress all my life. I was not equipped to become a farmhand. So just to sort of see me um, floundering with that job is part of the humour of it. So I definitely wanted the graphics to reflect that sort of light-hearted whimsy of it all. If they are concerned about climate change, if they are concerned about biodiversity loss, one of the most important things you can do, the most potent things you can do, is really look for those to know your farmer, and I don't mean literally, but to understand the way a farm is being farmed. Because if you encourage, if you buy from a best practice farm who are doing these sorts of things, you are encouraging them. And the more you encourage them to go on, the more the retailers, the big retailers, have to take notice of them. So that's the sort of education that I've been having lately, is just sort of understanding about what is behind food. Um, yeah, and what is, uh, and the farmers that I want to support out there. So we all have power, the power of our dollar is huge. <laughs>